how to control how heirs spend your money. Now, I love this conversation because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Unless you define how your heirs are going to spend your money, they're going to blow it. So before I go into some really awesome content, get a pen and paper, I want you to think about that. It's really serious. If you're going to be the one, like I am the one, making the money and creating this estate for my children and who I want to give my money to in charities, how do you really control them once you pass away? And that is called a trust. And it's very specific documents. It's a will. It's a trust. It's even in the operating agreements of your LLCs, you can write in all sorts of language about the behavior, whether they can sell the asset, whether they can transfer the asset. I mean, you can give so much definition to their spending for 50 to 100 years. So let's get into the details. So specifically, I'm going to talk about three things. What are the two very specific techniques about own nothing, control everything? And then we talk about asset management and tax strategies. So the two specific fundamentals that I'm going to talk about, and they're really important, is when you own nothing, even your cell phone, it can't be taken away from you. When companies control everything, your trusts control everything, and you personally own nothing, you have it set correctly. Now, my new book coming out in April on how to create you know, your kids millionaires. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. So this conversation really is the base of how do you create generational wealth for you and your family? And I think a lot of you that have companies out there and you've been watching and listening for a while, by the way, I'm just going to say it right away. Subscribe to my channel. If this is really interesting to you, hit a notification button. And, uh, I have all these techniques and concepts about how to live corporate life, because that's what it's about. And a lot of you that are attempting to do this, where you own nothing and control everything. The problem is that you actually, in your mind and your behavior, you still see yourself as the company. See, I have all these companies and then me, like I work for the companies. I am an employee. I don't own much at all. So I have lived this since I was 17 years old. When I read Think and Grow Rich, and then I did, I read a bunch of the Rockefeller books, the Carnegie family books. I mean, I have studied millionaire families and this is exactly what they do. And I can guarantee you the number one problem I see with most of my clients is they aren't separate in their head or their behaviors around their LLC or their S corp or whatever company you have in the world. And by the way, this works all over the world. So the second thing that I want to talk about is the, of the own nothing, control everything is your generational wealth and your family spending. So the average family blows an estate within 2.8 years. It's shocking. And that there's only one number one reason for that. The kids weren't like required to be financially literate and together as a family, they didn't talk about the trajectory of it. Like you got to imagine, I mean, cryptocurrency, cannabis, CBD, hemp, all these new asset classes are part of a new portfolio. So you have to think of generational families right now. If their kids weren't taught how to enter into these new asset classes or even be aware that they're here, they could do them wrong. So it is a really, really strict financial literacy plan, responsibility, consequences into the family. I mean, I have families that literally their kids don't get their trust unless they come to the big table and they're coached and mentored by our integrated wealth systems team. They're just, that's part of the rules of being in the trust and getting their inheritance is they got to get financially literate. So this is a really serious conversation for the families. Those of you out there that are serious about generational wealth. And if you're not, you know, this is probably interesting content for you. So let me tell you a story about someone who came to our community and I can't believe it's already like five years that's passed and you'll get to know him as you join into our community. His name's Justin. So it's a true story. And he had a partner who was very wealthy and he was his money partner and Justin did the work. They started with the flooring company, a contracting company, and then grew into real estate. And, uh, the gentleman said we're 50, 50 and he treated him like that. Justin didn't know all the stuff that I now have taught him over the last five years, uh, which is corporate structure and trusts and documents called operating agreements. Well, one day the gentleman passed away. Everything that they owned together went to probate. And that's what happens when you don't have a trust. Your state gets to own everything you created. Even if that's $50,000 worth of stuff, I don't care if it's a $20,000 bank account or $100,000 in some real estate investing. If you do not have corporate structure and trust structure, off to the probate courts you go. So it's really important that this gets handled, your documents. I used to have t-shirts that I sold way back in the day. I said, do paperwork or be poor because operating agreements are the agreements between partners and how things work. Each partner needs to bring their own entity and their own legacy planning to a relationship already set up. Now, if you're out there and you're watching going, whoo, 
all of a sudden she got into like some big conversations that we're not used to go up into my search bar and search for LLCs for EIDL loans for corporate tax how do you not pay tax I have so much content in this channel so again if you haven't subscribed by now go do it and then on the other side I really want to know your comments like how many of you are interested in this conversation and what more depth do you want me to talk about as we continue our everyday journey together here on our YouTube channel now the second conversation I want to have with you it really involves four different pieces of asset management and tax strategies so four specific things in getting this organized again your corporate structure that is owned in trust and done properly so the other one is notes the next one is probate and then the fourth one which is really interesting and we'll talk more about it in other videos but the interesting people who quietly come out of the woodwork when you pass away and your state is worth a lot of money that's an interesting one to deal with and how do your kids or your true beneficiaries deal with that so let's start with entities and trusts now I have again tons of videos on this channel about that but everything you own and how you make money needs to be done inside of a company so the way that I teach it in the most simplest form and I want you to write this down companies make money individuals get taxed so your companies are going to make all the revenue that you make whether it's in real estate your own company a direct sales company my publishing company that company makes the money and then I am a little employee of one of those companies and then your company by law gets all these deductions 81,000 pages of deductions if you forget to put the trust on top as the beneficiary of all of that you end up in probate and there are all sorts of details like wills and pour over wills and all sorts of durable powers of attorney that all those documents so at the end of my video I'm going to give you a link for a private consult with our team to talk about entities and trusts and how do we help you set up owning nothing and controlling everything now notes now notes are really interesting because notes can be done between your companies so say one company's real profitable one year and the other company's not as profitable but it needs money to pay its bills one company can actually loan the other company money by law that you just write promissory notes and you have to do a, a lot of detail in the paperwork and we have experts to do that so again we do paperwork or be poor but it has to get done and inside those notes you can pass on notes for generations you can forgive those notes or you can pay them back so that's a family decision on how you want to handle what would look like incurred debt over your lifetime but it actually helps balance out cash flow for different companies so let me tell you about probate I have a client uh, in the Midwest and it's been 34 years because his grandfather I think it was his great great grandfather I don't know the exact uh, lineage but they left an enormous estate completely undefined and everybody came out of the woodwork to say that's mine that's mine that's mine that should have been mine and it's not fair and it's not equal and it's amazing how families fight when the the person who generated the wealth did not define how it needs to be invested how it can be spent how it can be used what it can pay for I mean you have so much definition inside of a trust like my trust is really strict it's high responsibility and high consequences if you're not a contributing member of society and you're doing healthy positive things which is defined in the trust it's gone if they contribute to causes and things that we as a family have not believed in gone and it's it's not just a little bit it's done it's a one and done so I have another client really interesting and, and much more sophisticated trust it's called the non-depletion trust and that's where it never gets depleted it actually holds its value and actually is invested for more value and if the kids want some they can borrow it they have to write a business plan and they can apply for a loan and there's a board of advisors of the trust so I'm leaning towards changing some of mine to that because I like that you can't deplete the trust and it lasts for I mean the, this one has been over 100 years old so it's pretty rare that you can actually set that up and then another one is a generational skipping so if you're just pissed off at your kids or whatever you look back and they didn't do what you want them to do you just can generationally skip them and say y'all don't get anything your kids get everything or my grandkids get everything and I know someone I'll give you one more last story I have so many stories about this he's 94 years old he said you know my kids are brats or in one case several of them are super successful he said I'm going to spend it all so I did I raised my hand and I said I'd like to be your kid <laughs> anyway so we have a lot of fun with this we love generational wealth and really setting this up properly for you so I'm not a lawyer 
I'm not a tax strategist. I got to give you that. I've just done so much work with clients in this space. So I'm like your advocate and I facilitate these conversations and we have the lawyers and the licensed folks who will get all this done for you. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to the link below and I want you to just fill out a quick application. Check the box if you have an entity, check the box if you have a trust and we're going to get you to the right place. And we're going to talk to our senior team about working with us, coaching with us, and how do we help set you up? Own nothing, control everything. See you tomorrow.